Um, if they can't get chemotherapy, we use something like immunotherapy. And let's go through that. Um, and I have some immunotherapy basic principles. We usually try to use chemotherapy first when we can't. But if we can't because a person um, is not going to be able to get chemotherapy for whatever that reason is, we have the option to use multiple immunotherapies, either first or after we've used chemotherapy and it's no longer working for us. And sometimes we're actually using them together, um, chemotherapy followed by immunotherapy. And I'll show you that information in just a moment. That's probably the most important advance that we've had, or one of the most important advances that we've had in metastatic bladder cancer in the last year or so. So the immunotherapies that we have are atezolizumab and pembrolizumab. Um, you may have heard of Tecentric or Keytruda. These are the other names for these drugs. And these are the drugs that we use for people who can't get chemo right up front. Or after we've used chemo and the chemo is no longer keeping the cancer at bay, we can use things like pembrolizumab, nivolumab, or velumab. Um, and these are for people who have had cancer that's growing this type of bladder or urethelial cancer after we've used chemotherapy. So how does immunotherapy work? I think this is really interesting from a uh, scientist and doctor perspective and was so exciting when we were seeing the development of these treatments back in 20. 15, 2016 or so. Um, so let's go through this just briefly. So T cells are a type of white blood cell. These are cells that patrol your body all the time looking for invaders. And these invaders could be things like infections. They could be things like um, bacteria, something that's not supposed to be there and that we need to get rid of or viruses that we need to get rid of. Anything that's not supposed to be there because it's not part of you and it's not something that is going through your digestive tract. This is something I mean in your blood, then T cells are supposed to recognize it. There's something else that can be in a person that's not supposed to be there and it's not an infectious disease, it's cancer. Cancer cells start off as your own normal cells, but they go through mutations that make them go rogue and they are no longer part of you. And now they are trying to grow and spread and do whatever they want, but they're not following directions by your body anymore. And that's because they've gotten some mutations that essentially make these cells immortal, live forever, and make them have the ability to potentially spread and cause trouble. So T cells, these are the patrollers of our system, can recognize, hey, that cell used to be part of me, but now, now it's not. Now it's doing something it's not supposed to do. And it recognizes that because it can see that these cells are putting proteins up on their surfaces. What's in this diagram listed as an antigen, it's just a protein that the cell is putting out there to allow it to do something it wasn't supposed to do in the first place. A mutation allowed it to have that antigen or protein out there. And the T cell can see that's not supposed to be there. But the tumor cell is also putting out this PDL1 protein, a different protein that is essentially a silence protein. So when the T cell comes in, it uses its T cell receptor to recognize, hey, there's a weird protein on there. This is not supposed to be here. But it has a second signal, a second protein called a PD1 protein on that T cell. And the tumor cell engages with that with its PDL1 silencer protein and turns the T cell off. Binding between the PD1 and the PDL1 protein combinations block the T cell, turn it off, put it to sleep. It doesn't know what's going on. So it recognized that that tumor cell was weird, but it was silenced essentially, put it handcuffs before it could do its work and the, and the tumor cell turned it off. However, PD-1 and PDL one treatments, these immunotherapies can come in and stop that engagement between the T cell and the tumor cell and let that T cell do its job in getting that tumor cell out of the system. So the T cell comes in, it uses its T cell receptor. It recognizes that the tumor cell is not supposed to be there because it's putting proteins, antigens up on its surface that are not right. It comes in, it engages, and it's ready to do its job. And before it is silenced by the tumor cells, 
PDL1 that turns it off and makes it inactive, makes it go to sleep. The PDL1 or the PD1 treatment comes in, blocks that interaction. It stops, it stops that blockade of the tumor cell to put the, the T cell to sleep. And it lets the immune system recognize that, that intruder and kill it. So that was a whole lot of, of mess, a lot of stuff to think about. But essentially, these treatments, these immunotherapies, let the T cells be the police cells that they're supposed to be. Let them recognize the intruders, those cancer cells, and let them get them out of there. So as they're doing that, as they're getting that immune system up and attacking those cancer cells, they can also cause side effects. And so that's what I wanted to mention to make sure we were all aware of. They can cause inflammation. They can cause it anywhere. The most common places that they cause it are the thyroid. They can cause a little inflammation here. And sometimes people need to take thyroid medicine to replace thyroid hormone if the thyroid is irritated and it's not doing its job because of the, of the um, immunotherapy. They can cause inflammation in the lungs. They can cause a person to have a bit of a cough. And sometimes we need to monitor that or give some steroids to reduce the action of the immune system, um, turn it down so that people don't feel that cough. It can cause diarrhea because it causes inflammation. Immune cells go into the, the colon and don't allow the colon to absorb water the way it normally would. So extra water in your bowels means diarrhea. So that's something certainly we'd need to be aware of and turn off the immune system so the colon can absorb water and do its job again. It can cause inflammation in the skin, immune reactions in the skin, and that causes an itchy rash, which no one likes. And we can use usually a steroid cream to quiet down the immune system and help keep the treatment going and soothe the rash on the skin. And arthritis, inflammation in the joints, causes arthritis or pain, irritation and swelling in the joints, which is one of the more common things. But in reality, the immune system is in the whole body and it can cause effects anywhere in the entire body. So it's important anytime you're on immunotherapy to tell your doctor if you're not feeling well, if there's anything going on, because the doctor can do a number of different tests or physical examination moves to understand what's going on with you and make sure that the immunotherapy is not causing a problem. 